Welcome to Folklore on the Rocks. <laughs> Hi there, everybody. I'm Logan. I'm Lindsay. And welcome to Folklore on the Rocks. Yay. Yeah. Thanks for joining <laughs> us again, everybody. Yay. You keep coming back. That's so cool that. of you. <laughs> So we have some really fun stuff tonight. Yeah. Um, We are finally doing our Antarctic creature that we've been talking about for weeks, (laughs) for months even. It's just really cool that there's a creature that's near slash from Antarctica and we can talk about it, you know? Yeah. Like we're hitting seven continents, which is pretty freaking cool when there's only seven. Well, and, and really what I feel like, I mean, a lot of people are like, well, I could make up a story about something that lives in Antarctica. That's not hard, but <laughs> this is something that is actually a folklore that comes from the area around there. Uh, and that's something so cool that wherever we go, we create stories. It's yeah. just a byproduct Everywhere. of being people. Even a place that no one lives. Yep. I'm it's very cool. excited to hear, you know, the first cryptids and monsters from space. Oh, man. Yes. <laughs> I guess those would be aliens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all, but, all the greys or whatever. <laughs> uh, so we've got a ton to talk about. A big journey to Antarctica, but first a tasty drink, huh? Yes. So obviously our drink tonight is our creature, the Ninjin. So it is a really cool drink. I'll tell you the ingredients in a second, but you put them all in a cocktail shaker and you shake it really, really hard. Just it, shake the hell out of yeah, it. Seriously. Like, crush that ice up. <laughs> it's also the same trick to the McDonald's salad shakers. You just really got to shake the living hell out of them. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's directly proportionate to how good they are. <laughs> we got to get the dressing covering everything, right? Yeah, exactly. So basically put them all in the cocktail shaker and with ice and you shake it really, really, really hard. It is a crazy deep blue drink. And if you shake it hard enough, it should have ice crystals all across the top from the crushed ice that you made when you it's were shaking it. It's getting frosty. It. You're doing it so right. very Antarctic. Basically, yeah. it has one ounce of white rum. Um, you can use vodka too. That's fine. We picked white rum because of our creature. It'll make more sense when we talk about it. It has half an ounce of blue curacao, half an ounce of creme de violette, which isn't in a ton of drinks. It, it's in like an aviation, which is a great drink, but it's this really, really deep purple floral liqueur. Blue curacao, everyone knows it's in a million drinks. It's blue. It tastes like blue. If you're familiar with an AMF, that's what makes it blue. That's what it is. (laughs) It is technically an orange liqueur with blue coloring. Mm. A lot of blue coloring. But it's a great mixer. It's great to add into stuff. And then you add in one ounce of lemon juice. So it's pretty refreshing. It's an interesting flavor, that's for sure. But it's really the visual that's so great about this drink. Very striking. The blue and the ice. And it's so... Antarctic Ocean. Yes. It's the same color as many of my favorite X-Men. Yeah. And (laughs) this is a drink courtesy of our resident cocktail master, Anubis. Oh, man. That dude knows what he is doing. He really does. And we love him so much. And he sent me a nice gift in Pokemon Go. Thanks. Yeah, I got that too. (laughs) 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 Um, So, uh, make it... Pause drink here, it. go Enjoy get it, it. <laughs> make yeah. a drink, drink with us, <laughs> kind of get into this vibe of this frozen, desolate wasteland, yeah, and to actually like- help with that. Before we decided to do our internet folktales last week, we were like, okay, so are there Antarctic folktales at all, right? Yeah, we looked around we for them, uh, but... Really, Antarctica, not a lot of people live there, and it doesn't have a whole lot of history other than people trying to learn right. about Which it. Which is why this one is so notable that there even is a creature related to Antarctica in any way. That's something yeah. really cool. <laughs> but I did find a really fun article on the toast that comes up with some Antarctic fairy tale titles. And they kind of relate to, like, the titles the researchers there would have. So I just kind of want to read you guys this list. So you can't say that we didn't give you any Antarctic folk tales in some way. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Um, so the first title is The Winter No One Went Into a Fugue State. <laughs> oh. Which is fair. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the ozone hole that shrank to the size of a pea. 
<laughs> the enchanted, unbreakable, full spectrum bulb. Ooh, that, <laughs> um, that sounds riveting. Here you go. The marine biologist with silver hair who married the seal king and never had to write another grant proposal ever again. Ooh, that, that is the life. Every right researcher there. dreams of that day. She found the third option aside from publish or perish. <laughs> exactly. Marry the seal king. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> the littlest emperor penguin colony that was an appointed metaphor for humanity. <laughs> and couldn't tap Exactly. Dance. No happy feet here. <laughs> the day when all of the supplies arrived intact and on time. <laughs> <laughs> I'd imagine that just comes with the oh, territory. Right. Exactly. Just, if you see anything at all, that's a good day. <laughs> the little red Tucker snow cat. I, I think that may be talking about a snowcat, like, like a vehicle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, uh, it's S N O C A T. Yeah. So it's snowcat. No, oh, perfect. Um, the, one, yeah. the one who never gave up. <laughs> yeah, I think I can. Exactly. I think I can. I, think I, I can, can make it over this other hill. <laughs> oh, and I've. I've been I've been snowmobiling with my family, and uh, a lot of the time when you're doing those steep uphill climbs, you really oh, risk God, throwing scary. out the snow you're gripping into, and you might just sink right down into the snow. It's a scary thing because it's right when you really need that throttle, yeah. and oh, now you have to dig your machine. Uh, out. It feels like so, the uh, fatality, fatality of like my old like geo prism trying to get up. Uh, Parley's Canyon, which is like this really steep canyon that we have going up to Park City. And it's just like I'd floor <laughs> yeah. it and I'd be going like 50 maybe for like miles. It's a gauntlet Ugh. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, so another one is Gnome's Own Wine doesn't cause a fistfight or a hangover. I imagine that's <laughs> much needed then. Dr. Goldilocks and the three stable and thriving seabird population. <laughs> Oh, that sounds it wonderful. Uh, the fair folk who keep the pipes from freezing. Mm. And here's here's an ultimate one. The funding that never ran out. Oh, now that is a it's wondrous only, thing right? indeed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Jack, who sent down a core sample and reaped statistically significant findings. Whoa. <laughs> wow. No The dream way. <laughs> of an every Antarctic researcher. Um <laughs> The prince who kept a normal sleep schedule despite six months of daylight. Fair. Oh, now that's that's royal blood right there. <laughs> right. Um, the whales have nothing wrong with them. Oh, I refuse <laughs> to believe it. <laughs> Here's a good one for you. No one made a th the thing reference. Not even once. Oh, that's definitely man. a fairy tale. That's a... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I've been resisting this whole time because I just feel like if I start, I'm not <laughs> yeah, going to stop. <laughs> um, the glacier report that showed only average rather than drastically increasing seasonal melts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, aside from, something aside from the worst news right, ever. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so those were just kind of some really fun ones. So we can, I guess, imagine them as our Antarctic fairy tales for yeah. what it's worth. <laughs> That was a fun little little journey into the folklore that could surround yeah. well, I mean, like, <laughs> this creature. The fair folk who keep the pipes from freezing. I could see that. Yeah, but it does kind of paint a picture of this is a research-driven yeah. place. It is and, the continent uh, of research. Yeah, and the culture behind it is either people trying to stay sane and, and mm -hmm. calm in very, very cold and difficult conditions – or it's, on the other hand, a lot of stories are like this one that actually came from people who went there to look for something that they could use. Just real quick, our promo for this week is for a show called Anxiety. Um, it's about the struggles of disorders like anxiety and depression. Um, he talks about coping skills and he shares stories of his own struggles as well as those of others. I myself has, have struggled with mental illness my entire life, so I understand for sure how helpful it really is to discuss stuff like this, talk it out, understand that other people are, you know, right there with you in the same boat. You're not alone, you know. So if it's something that you struggle with or something that you want to understand a little bit more, I think that maybe you want to check the show out. So if you're interested, here is the promo. Do you or someone you know struggle through life with anxiety-related mental disorders? Ever get that feeling that you are one of the few? 
I'm here to tell you that you are not alone. Take a journey with me as I talk about key points in my past and how they may have led to me being diagnosed with anxiety and panic disorder. After which we will talk about different ways to tone down the anxiety and maybe even beat it together on anxiety. The easiest way to remember the name is by thinking about how one searches for a state of zen in the midst of the anxieties of life. My name is Gerald, and I'm the host of Anxiety. All right, we are back. Hey, that was kind of yeah. cool. It's not really a, uh, a folklore, uh, mythology, and you know, monsters podcast, but at the same time, it's a human uh, anxiety it's a human podcast. It's, yeah, it's it's part of the human experience these days. I would guess that mental illness has probably led to even some of the stories that we know today. You know, oh, the absolutely. struggle with yeah. demons, your own inner demons, and that mm-hmm. kind of thing, you know? It's a very scary thing when the mind creates its own mm-hmm. prisons and monsters it's around very it. very true. And so it's, it's really good that uh, there's some podcasts and really resources out there that take it seriously and don't treat it like it's something that shouldn't be talked about and should be and the stigma. shamed or anything like that. Yeah, we're all different. We are all, you know, operating on a different yeah. set of frequencies and chemicals. And really, if you can find something that works for you, great. If you're if you have something that's not working, find a way to find that that right yeah, thing. Yeah, listen to a know? podcast, maybe it'll help. Talk to some people, you know. There's there's lots of resources, there's lots of people that love you and are there for you. But moving on from that, I did want to mention a couple other things <laughs> real quick uh with Antarctica. There's a couple other ideas that we tossed around before we landed on our really super cool internet folk tales that you guys listened to last week. Yeah, and good job with that, Liz. That turned out pretty <laughs> well. You too. <laughs> Thanks. We considered maybe doing the Ernest Shackleton expedition, maybe, but that's not really a fairy tale. That's a thing that happened. But it's interesting. Yeah, so yeah. I encourage you, if you really want to get into this Antarctic vibe, you know, read up more about that. It's really, really very cool. There's a really cool book by Jules Verne. It's called An Antarctic Mystery, but it's way too long for us to do an episode about. It it is two volumes. It's the response to a Poe work that is from somebody else's journal. It looks really awesome. Definitely. But you have to read it in context. Old school competition between good authors, you know? Yeah. Um, But I will put, it's on Project Gutenberg, so the full text is readily available for free so i'll just stick it in our show notes for this show for you guys um in case you want to read it uh yeah so but like i said way too long for us to do anything with (laughs) but it's cool so we just wanted to mention it um so i think that's it let's just talk about our creature Yeah, so our creature this week, our creature this week is called the Ninjin. I like this. Same as our drink, and uh, really, if if you heard from our very beginning of, of our podcast, if you said, we've got a, an Antarctic cryptid, if you look it up, well, there's only one, really, and that's the, the Ninjin. <laughs> but it's so cool that there is one. Definitely. I'm just really excited. So Antarctica. So what do you, what does it do? Does it, does it wander across the icebergs or anything like that? No, this is, this is a maritime aquatic beast. This is essentially a sea monster. Ah. And I, I like to kind of keep it in that lane because it, it is framed. Uh, its story, however, anyway, goes that it was originally sighted from a Japanese fishing vessel. And okay. it had, which would make sense with the name, I yes, guess, right? Uh, then it, it sounds Japanese. It is Japanese. It translates to uh, human or person, and I'll I'll, ah, I'll tell you why in just so. a second. Okay, cool. And I I kind of like to accept the whole story as it is presented, even though uh, it technically first popped up on on a Japanese forum, not on like a like a Reddit kind of place. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And so so as I mentioned, its name does mean person or human, and that's because it kind of roughly represents a human now that's i say take that as lightly as you possibly can uh if you if so what we say humanoid, humanoid. when we talk about i would say tetrapod right? uh it's got <laughs> of course you would <laughs> a head two forelimbs and two hind limbs okay and so that kind of Is basic it- star shape that most things on this planet have well not most things. Much more things don't Many have. Many things. Yeah, there we go. That body shape. <laughs> the one that you and I have, and hopefully most of our listeners. There we go. Hopefully. Although we and do not discriminate. If not, we don't discriminate. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. 
So its name means it means human, but it's not human sized. That's the next piece. It is actually quite a bit bigger. Ooh. This one is twenty to thirty meters long. So it's a oh my giant. God. I mean, think think really whale sized thing. Yeah, that's Huge definitely whale sized creature. And it that's ginormous. Yeah, its behavior. It, it, as far as I can tell, it's only really been seen. It hasn't attacked no ships. Encounters. It hasn't eaten people okay. or anything like that. But it's been seen. Uh, it's been hazily videoed and photographed. The pictures I've seen, sure, could <laughs> to my skeptics' right. eye, yeah. could I, I can kind of see it. I could also see how it could be a, a an undiscovered natural creature that we just haven't really found yet. Well, and it's the perfect place for us to not have seen that because, you know, of how little we've been able to do, even though we're trying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, you know, and, and really, a lot of sea monsters came from early interpretations of supernatural people, of things that naturally live in the water. Uh, these are alien yeah. creatures and body shapes that people aren't used to seeing. Definitely. Definitely, yeah. A humanoid in the Antarctic Sea. Yeah, so it, it, <laughs> for sure. A, lo- a lot of a lot of websites actually call the Ninjen the Japanese mermaid uh, because Ooh. it's this kind of large aquatic thing. Some some artist depictions uh, show it with feet. Others show it with kind of a large mermaid tail. Okay. A lot of it f- feels like kind of a in the photos to me it kind of looks just like a blurry white smear. Um, there is some conjecture that it could be a giant ray. And that I find oh. very plausible. Are rays able to survive that kind of temperature that we know of? I know sharks are. I don't know about rays. Rays are usually more warm water. Uh, I am yeah. not a marine biologist. I know a marine <laughs> biologist is listening. She'll tell us. But <laughs> for now, uh, it would have to be it would have to be an undiscovered uh, kind, right? Uh, and well, and of course, there's different. Like we think we there's the uh, what is it, the Greenland shark? Yeah, I think that's what it's called. But it can survive. It it lives and thrives in Arctic environments. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. And there's weird stuff that lives out there that, that they're only finding, uh, like a like the yeti crab. The yeti crab uh-huh. lives around uh-huh. hydrothermal that's vents cool. uh, up in the. I think it's in the Antarctic and it's been there for just millions of years. And they've specifically adapted to life in that one spot. And you'd never Mm -hmm. know they were there unless you went looking for them. And that's so cool. And this, this creature could easily be that same exact kind of thing, right? Like Mm -hmm. we probably do less research in the oceans surrounding Antarctica because it's probably harsher in an already harsh environment. Mm -hmm. You know, and there are creatures that we can actually see and observe and study yeah. on land, <laughs> like penguins and, you know. And most of the people, if they're going to the oceans there, they're going there for, you know, there's uh, some tourism or some, most of it's fishing. Uh, it's right. to kind of make use of the resources that are there. And that's kind of, uh, we, we, if you've ever seen a lot of the coverage of it, we, we know that Japanese culture has a very specific relationship with fishing and also with whaling. And mm-hmm. it isn't always uh, congruent with what Western values are. And right. my own thoughts on how they should be treated, it's a cultural thing and they'll handle it in their way. But I kind of feel like that's something that kind of builds into the ninja myth because what makes the ninja myth special and kind of the reason that we brought last week's episode into this one is that, like I say, the, the seed was planted on a forum but it grew very, very quickly. A lot of people then uh, corroborated it, and they said, oh, well, it's, somebody else saw this, or they had a story like this. And what was very interesting about it is that these stories are very strongly... They, they don't cancel each other out. There's a lot of supporting evidence from different reports that clearly were affected by people who read something on the internet and wanted to add on to it, or maybe they just saw this real creature. Right. So it's, like I say, it's a big, giant, aquatic... Uh, we, we think it's probably a mammal. I like to think it's a mammal. It's not... Uh, in the pictures and a lot of the descriptions, it's not scaly or any... I wonder, like, could it be, though, with the temperatures? Oh, absolutely, it could be. Because mammals are generally warm-blooded, mm-hmm. right? Oh, yeah. You'd, you'd need except to for, be warm-blooded. Except for maybe the platypus? 
platypus is one. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, okay, I just wasn't sure because it's so weird. Oh, the monotremes are very weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they would have to be warm-blooded, so I'd imagine they need to keep a specific temperature, but I guess they could have adapted to that being a lower temperature. Oh, yeah, they could have like, insulated with a like lot of blubber. Lower. Um, size is one way that uh, yeah. that mammals get, really thought get around it. surviving in cold temperatures. When you say what it looks like, is it like what? What color is it? Okay, so it is very specifically white. See? White. Okay, yeah, I, yeah. I, I should have mentioned that earlier. In, in the visual, no, it's I just fine. Got I was just trying to kind away. of get a picture, a picture in my brain. Yeah, so it's, um, so it's white. It's like beluga y. Beluga y, yes. And really, just just in the last couple, I, I think it was a couple months, uh, an image sur- surfaced. If you type beluga knees, uh, you'll see mm. a picture of a beluga whale that looks very much like it's swimming and you see its knees bending to kick its tail back. Um, that's creepy as well. And Blah. it was re- also recently debunked by a marine biologist who said, yeah, there's nothing there. And most of us know whales have a pelvis, but no leg bones. They went back into yeah. the water and, well, and they don't use those anymore. Belugas are like notoriously bumpy and lumpy. Yes. Too. They're kind of encantado, like in that way, like kind of boto dolphin, mm-hmm. uh, weird shape creature, <laughs> weirdly shaped creatures with with lumps. Yeah, there's that, that kind of bulbousness, and that's kind of yeah. something that is often attributed to the ninja as well. It's mm-hmm. s- smooth or or bulbous in a lot of a lot of places. It's not. A, could it be a beluga? I I absolutely think it could have been. Do, I, I just don't know, do they even, are they even able to live in those temperatures? I don't know much about them. Oh, well. Maybe you don't either. No, I, I'm just <laughs> bringing random questions on you. Sorry. It, but uh, in, in, in the picture, it doesn't look as much like a beluga as a giant angelfish with a kind of humanoid face on it. Yeah? Yeah. But turns huh. sideways, if you can understand. Well, I guess belugas aren't that large either, too. They're big. They're just not. This is like at least double the yeah, size. Yeah, this of is a huge. Beluga. This is a great big thing that's been seen swimming around Antarctica by several uh, Japanese sailors. <laughs> and you just watch; it's like a mutant beluga. Yeah. <laughs> now, oh, that'd be weird. Yeah. Uh, now it it doesn't again. It hasn't it hasn't attacked anybody or anything like that. It doesn't seem to have any attributes other than being rare. Very uh, exotic and big, except mm-hmm. there's a kind of another another layer to this. Okay. Some people say that there is a big old creature that swims around Antarctica. <laughs> and guess what? Although some people, some more people say that the Japanese government is covering it up. Oh. Do you know why? No, I don't know why. Because they believe that they may have a chemical inside of them for hunting. Okay, like these are creatures that the Japanese government knows about and they're like purposely not wanting people to, they're like suppressing it in some way. Yes, totally possible. Is that what you mean? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yes. How conspiracy I love it. <laughs> yes, I love a good cover-up mystery. It just always thinks me, it makes me think of Godzilla, where this, they, there were <laughs> there <you> experiments <laughs> once upon a time, and no one's going to say that it was their fault. But, oh, this guy with a machine gun is the perfect man for the job. Yeah, that kind of thing. But it happened, <laughs> yeah. and now we need to fight it. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, so th- that's that's kind of really the ninja. Uh, it's a great big animal, for the most part, that's swimming over there. Uh, it has been seen a lot by sailors and told it doesn't exist by the Japanese government. And right. then conjecture has been made that they may have a reason for telling you it doesn't exist when it does. Mm-hmm. And then there's there's videos and photos and stuff? There are videos and photos. I, I take those with a grain of salt. Uh, right. Many of those look like a little bit of Photoshop Friday. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, yeah. But I mean, this spread because of the internet. Yes, so and that's it's, kind of just what comes with it. Yeah, exactly. And to have I mean, to have that uh, that is part mm, of the story now. Yeah, for sure. That enables it to not simply stay locked in only one part of the world uh, by language. By right. including some pictures with the story, suddenly it can spread to the whole world, and that's something really yeah. cool. 
someone from South America who, you know, lives at the bottom of Chile can be like, I've seen that creature too. Yeah. Or something like that, you know? I mean, it's it's nearby. Yeah. <laughs> Penguins live at the bottom of South America. So, like, it could be a thing. Yeah, totally. <laughs> So, Be yeah, that's kind of the, the nuts and bolts of the ninja. Okay. Uh, what does it eat? That's a cool creature. Uh, well, there's only so many options around Antarctica. Lots of different fish, uh, some birds if you're going to go out of the water or catch them. Maybe a seal? Seals. <laughs> uh, penguins. Penguins and whales. And that's it. Probably some sharks go north enough. I don't know. I don't know either. Hmm. So, it eats sea creature stuff. It is a sea creature. And it lives in Antarctica. For the most part. That's so cool. Yeah, it seems seems pretty friendly uh, as far as sea creatures go. (laughs) A.K.A. not attacking you. (laughs) Yeah, it's not not luring sailors to their deaths. It's not crushing the hulls of ships and dragging them into the abyss. It's just kind of... That we know of. Just kind of swimming over there doing fishy stuff. That's how we hear about it, Logan. Yeah. (laughs) We would never know if they did that. <laughs> it mysteriously got lost in Antarctica. Yeah. And he really just, maybe he really just preys on sailors. There are... There, maybe it's the infamous siren. There are tontine arrangements of people sworn to silence that no one would ever speak of this until the last one dies. You know? <laughs> it could very well be the case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> that's cool. So, yeah, yeah. That, that's the, that's the ninja. Now, looking at it from a... Accepting the myth as it is presented, let's look at it as a monster. Is it uh, uh, now? One thing that's kind of fun is D- Lindsay and I actually recently started our D and D campaign. Hooray! We'll, we'll tell you all about it a little later in case you in case you're not interested in it or something mm. like that. And that's fine. But <laughs> <laughs> we'll try to keep our like chit chat to the ends of the episode, yeah. so you can just yeah. if you're not interested but that's not a big deal if D's not your thing that's fine but it is one of mine and it's often one of the ways that i look at different creatures so right this is clearly what's the a, challenge rating yeah, this is an aquatic <laughs> creature i would say probably challenge based on its size i would say challenge rating 13 or 14 i would say it might even just be an animal Really, I'm not seeing a whole lot of evidence of magic to not monstery. it or monstery yeah. aspects. However, perhaps it, perhaps it's elusiveness and hardy survival without constantly breaching to feed or you know following after fishing boats for food or, or something like that. Maybe mm-hmm. that is part of its magic. Totally possible. Very well, could be. Definitely. Yeah. What do you think its alignment would be? When it's something that is just kind of peaceful over there. Um, seems like it's mostly been hunted, not the hunter. I would, so it's prey. Yeah, I would call it n- neutral, just straight across the board. Yeah, true neutral. I do think that when you see one, it's probably a good day. Maybe it's a sign of good things, so maybe neutral good. Uh, okay, yeah. I could see that. It feels like it could be t- potentially some sort of... A uh, fey, oh yeah, or or shape or changer, elemental, That's a, or shapeshifter. Yeah, something turned yeah. into that thing. Very possible. That's appealing to me. I mean, it fits with what we just talked about recently with the boto. You know, the shapeshifting element of that. It's it's kind of it's kind of a similar type creature, I guess. Yeah, from what we can tell, at least, um, humanoid. But what's weird with this one is that it's humanoid, and aquatic at the same time rather than yeah and just just being one or the other and again as as this is an audio format i do feel (laughs) the responsibility to put the tack in there and say roughly humanoid and we'll post some pictures and stuff yeah on our on the show notes so you can see (laughs) maybe put some on social media or something like that and really before we tie up on on the ninja i i would like to kind of mention that i kind of put that as people like to see themselves First and foremost, uh, mm-hmm. you know, people will see something that looks like a person in a monster. That's why we get a lot of humanoid shaped monsters. Yeah, it makes sense. We I can't remember what it's called, but we we project personality onto inanimate objects mm-hmm. all of the time. Yeah. You know, we'll see a face where there's not a face just because it has that same general composition. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm, you know? I'm looking at this shape and what is easy 
for someone who has one head, two arms, and two legs uh, to see that same body shape here. Again, I just started, you know, listening to a book about octopuses. So we, <laughs> you can jumble up the body shapes any way you want when you go underwater. And right. so really, I have no idea where its eyes really are, if it has them, uh, where its mouth would be. Fair. It, Maybe it has echolocation. This could be. Uh, so while I initially classified it in D&D terms as an animal, it could be an aberration. It could be something that is a gibbering ah. ball of consuming hunger from the. You some know, sort of abomination. Yeah. From like some eldritch giant- forgotten tomb that has come out. <laughs> those yeah. giant like jelly cubes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But. Uh, could be. Is, anything's possible. That shapes itself into that. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. So, and that's and could definitely be that. Yeah. So that's kind of the ninja, Lindsay. Let's talk about our D and D game. Uh, okay. Because <laughs> I'm really excited about it. I thought it was pretty cool, and we got some time. Because yeah, there's how oh, we do. But and the, really, with the ninja being kind of a shorter story, it's right, because it's really a newer story. It hasn't grown. It. I think yeah. we're doing our part by keeping it moving spreading the word yeah people go yeah. look this up go uh, keep your eyes open if you've got a, a a grad school assignment down to antarctica one that's really cool you're very lucky yeah that's fucking cool wear warm socks two watch <laughs> out for the ninja uh and if or maybe go look for it yeah. and tell us if it's benevolent or not yeah but use your best judgment i think it's but don't die. probably cold and dangerous there yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit. Yeah. So, <laughs> D&D. Uh, Lindsay, yeah. who are you? So, my character is a variant human Tempest cleric. And she's super fucking cool. Cool. Um, she, the first oh, time she is that sweet, she yeah. Meet, well, she's not sweet at all. Oh, she's actually. getting there. Sorry. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I know you. I know what you mean. Sweet, like cool, but yeah, she's definitely. Oh yeah, she's kind uh, of a little bossy so far. Bossy, yeah. very bitter, very sarcastic. A little bit. Very similar to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, like the first time she, that she used her lightning and thunder powers, because she's a tempest cleric, her hair turned sheet white. So just like sh- the shock white of a natural hair. Which is cool. Um, every time she casts magic, her eyes shift from green to gold and they kind of glow. And this uh, like white blue lightning just races across her skin whenever she casts any yeah. sort of magic. So she's really cool. Like it's I really like clerics because potentially if if, you know, you get your stats all right and everything, um, they can fight melee. They can fight magic. They can heal. They can they kind of have. Their toes in every pond, I guess. A little bit, yeah. I'm I don't glad- know what the phrase is. But <laughs> I'm glad you're liking your character. That's that's a cool thing. No, she's she's fun, and um, she has some really fun interactions with your character. Oh, yes, indeed. Yeah. So tell us about you. Oh well, I have uh, I've adopted the mantle of one Atrosian Dross, <laughs> former prisoner, current member of the Black Label Gang, and well. Pact of the Chain Warlock and favored nephew of Asmodeus himself. Uh, he's Perfect. He is a tiefling. And this is the accent we get, Yeah, too. he is a I tiefling warlock <laughs> who just is, he's like 30% prick. Like, he's just like a little <laughs> bit, but he's also, <laughs> he's he's the devil guy who's all about the devil. <laughs> Embracing it. I love it. And he's got warlock magic. He opens up portals to hell and shoots fire out of them and whatever he wants. Uh, Soon he's going to get a pet imp that's just going to be a total little asshole. It's really going to be fun. Yeah, I cannot wait for level three. Yeah. (laughs) So it's going to be nice. We've just barely started our adventure. We'll kind of fill you guys in a little bit at a time because this is something both Lindsay and I do together and it's kind of fun. We have a really good DM who's been oh, super home good. Br- he's been homebrewing this world that we're in for decades. Oh, and you all uh, met Danny at a, on an earlier episode. He's there too. Yeah, he's a half elf drow ranger. Yeah. And Freddy's a member of our little stories. Freddy is the barbarian. You've heard about Freddy. <laughs> yes. He's a barbarian human who's just not very bright. Um, I think my favorite part of our first session was we started off by fighting these rodents of unusual size in 
the basement of a brewery. Yes. And he killed one, and then he went off to one of the barrels and didn't participate in the fight whatsoever for the rest of the time because he was just drinking. <laughs> Lindsay, I, I love that. Uh, really, this, this is not patronizing at all. I love that D&D is so new to you that rats <laughs> in the basement is no. <laughs> is new and fresh to you. That's something so cool. I know. So it was cool. more just that he was like, oh, rough. Dead rat, there's my beer. <laughs> oh, yeah, and Freddy, <laughs> you know? Freddy, who cared not at all about the rats. It was really he fun. He was like, whatever, guys, you can deal with this. <laughs> yeah, and it's been really fun to kind of jump into it with this gang, and we'll see where it goes. And Yeah, it's fun. Cause well, there, it's a whole variety of uh, how often we've all played. Like, um, I haven't played much. Another member of ours hasn't played much. Um, Danny, I, I believe that Danny and... And our DM both have. And I think Fred has too. And you obviously have. I'm a huge nerd. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a couple newbies. There's a couple of old hands at this, you know. So it's it's a good uh, it's a good mix. Yeah. And I think we've got some really fun adventures ahead. And we're it's more than just throwing this in there because it's kind of fun and it's something we like to do. But also, this is really, this is what it's all about for us. This is collaborative storytelling and everyone working together to move something forward. And that's right. really what a good myth or folktale or monster really needs. Is yeah, that's enough- how our creatures came about. Yeah. Right? And so that's something that I'm really excited to kind of do with this gang of friends. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. Yeah. I'm excited. And we'll, we don't meet super often, so you may not hear about it all the time. Yeah, so which maybe you'll be happy about, or maybe you won't. If we don't mention but. it, don't be like, "Oh, did your gang disband?" No, <laughs> we're just adults with lives doing yeah, stuff. Yeah, we we only can meet about once a month, anyway. Yeah. So, but it's really fun. I kind of shot for. <laughs> my sister calls it uh, Pikachu Detective because I'm all like electric lightning magic and i'm an investigator perfect <laughs> I, picked, I picked a background that isn't normally in the player's handbook and so that's been fun to play with neat i'm um, the devil yeah I guess. and i and our story started i forgot to mention this earlier but our story started with uh, it's me transporting logan or yeah. th- his character dross yeah. to be like turned in like yes for, for a crime f- philandering and general <laughs> ne'er-do-wellery <laughs> yes exactly um which is a really fun way to, to start a campaign i think so yeah but anyway it's been really fun good i'm glad you're I'm glad you're liking it uh i know mm. i'm having fun with it and uh good. expect to see a little bit of spillover from that into into this show because uh, and if anyone's like, no, D&D, it's the devil's game. Well, really, you should go. <laughs> then come out from the 80s, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is no satanic panic anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. Well, that's all I got. I hope you, I hope everyone liked hearing about the Ninja. Um, there's not a whole lot of stuff out there uh, about the Ninja, but what is out there is fascinating and it's surprisingly congruent. Uh, it works together and creates a story that maybe something is actually out there. And some corroboration yeah. for sure and we'll, like i said we'll, we'll post some pictures and whatever videos we can find that are of any value at all <laughs> and those will be on our show notes um i'll try to get some on our social media too i kind of suck at social media sometimes so sorry about it mm. um but i try but speaking of social media you can find us on instagram and facebook at folklore on the rocks you can find us on twitter Mm-hmm. At, at at what? Oh, I know this one well. It is <laughs> folklore rocks. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, pictures, notes, sources on our website at folkloreontherocks dot com. Um, we have a Patreon. If you would like to donate, we would be eternally grateful. Um, that that's a monthly donation in increments. I think that we've we've got like four t- four or five tiers. I can't remember right now um, of a certain dollar amount each month, and there are certain benefits that come with it. Um, one would be that you get a discount code to our merch shop, which is folkloreontherocks.threadless.com. We have really cool stuff on that merch shop, and if um, if you see something that's not on there that you want that Threadless has, I'll definitely try to get it on there for you. 
But we generally have some really cool stuff, you know, like uh, mugs, shirts, tote bags. Beach towels. Beach towels. (laughs) Just a bunch of different kind of things. So check that out if you want. If you want to just make a one-time donation, we have a PayPal button on our website. We will accept your money in that fashion, too. We will. (laughs) And it will go straight to all of the costs that we have monthly. Yes. (laughs) Because it does actually, it does end up costing money to run a decent podcast. In so. short, this is your opportunity to buy us a drink. And thank you, if you ever yeah. consider it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and free stickers, if you guys write us a review and send in a screenshot. These are awesome stickers. They're vinyl. They will stick anywhere, like uh, your water bottle or your laptop or wherever you want to put them. If you want to stick them on your local coffee shop somewhere if they have that great but all you have to do is leave us a review on like itunes or facebook or stitcher or whatever once we hit that 100 we are gonna do a bonus episode with a listener selected creature which could be really cool just pick a good you one get a say. <laughs> <laughs> um so just tell your friends um We really appreciate any word of mouth you can get out to us. I know, honestly, it really is the best way for a podcast to grow. So if if you want us to, you know, keep making shows, uh, help us get the word out there. You know, suggest us anytime someone goes, I really like this other podcast I listen to. Yeah, when you get on the dating Uh, apps and and guys, (laughs) when the girls are like, what podcast do you listen to? Say us with pride. It'll be fun. Definitely. They'll think you're cool. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Definitely. So we would really appreciate any mentions in that regard. But we, once again, thank you guys for listening. Yeah, and thank you. We hope that you tune in next Sunday. <laughs> <laughs>